Um, thank you everyone for coming along this evening. Um, my name is Croc Cayman. I am, uh, I mean, for business wise, I do, I just fix computers, going house to house locally, but I do a lot of work uh, on the web as a hobby, uh, as experimental as an interest, I look into it. And this talk is going to be a lot about that experimental side of, uh, of uh, looking at the concept of that my philosophy, code is art. And uh, I'll get to what that means in a, in a minute. But uh, using that philosophy, uh, I created my website, which is called Cayman Design. I created this in 2008. And it's founded on three main principles, uh, which I used as the, 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 the basis for creating it and designing it and, and, and referring to these three founding principles for all the work that I do uh, creatively. And the first one is that code is art, and that is not to say that all uh, code is art, because it's like saying you know, all writing is poetry, and we know that uh, newspapers like the Sun are clearly not poetry, and maybe ironic poetry, but that some code can be art, because uh, I believe in an axiom that art is personality, that you cannot create art without personality, and you cannot, uh, and, and, and all art expresses a personality, even if you try to make it devoid of that. It is the idea that uh, captures art. And so, therefore, I believe strong, very strongly uh, that, that code can be art, uh, and that I aim to design and create things that are artistic, uh, not only maybe at the visual level, like creating software that makes art, but the fact that the source code itself can actually be an art form, that it can be an expression of personality in the same way that say, poetry is an expression of art in the form of text, that we can use functionality in the same sort of way. My website, um, I aim not to be too technical in this talk, so if there's anything that you, any points you want me to clarify, just stop me uh, and, and ask for any longer questions, you can uh, hold those to the end. Um, but my website, I made it in uh, 2008, it's been HTML5 uh, since, since, since the beginning basically. And as this concept of, of it being, you know, code being art, um, it's created without any divs, without any spans, no classes, and there are no IDs. If you are a web programmer, you'll understand what it is. If you're not, don't, don't worry. It basically means that I'm you not using a lot of the facilities that are there and bringing something down to an absolute core essence. Um, I'll give you just a quick look at the website. I might be referring to it uh, as I go through, but even despite not having any of these uh, features, it's not a plain blank white page as you might expect. It is a, oh, if I could type, <laughs> not used to this keyboard, not really a new mistake. Right, this uh, projector kind of bleaches it out. But it's a fully designed website with, you know, topography, everything, and images in some places, it's, you know, all there. When I say no IDs presentation, well, I simply mean that there are IDs in it because you have to have anchors to the headings so people can hyperlink your headings, but they're not used in the CSS in any way to style something. Um, the second principle is solve only my problem because, as I said, the internet's full of generic code that solves generic problems generically. Everyone is out trying to solve everybody's problem and they don't bother trying to solve a single particular problem. Software continually expands, so the maximum that uh, all software expands into it can read mail, or in, in a modern context, all software expands into it, has an app store built into it. Um, <laughs> that, that in order to get something done, you have to solve, you have to start minimizing the problems that you're solving, and minimizing who you're solving the problems for, and then so therefore, instead of working on a hobby website forever and never releasing it, I decided on this principle that to solve my own problem and just get the website done in as quick as and as simple a fashion as possible. And this goes a long way for, for any kind of software that you're writing. Um, here's an example of that is that uh, of, of solving your own problem, uh, especially in the context of a blog, is be personal. Don't write your blog for other people trying to target a non-existent customer that you have imagined in your head that you are never going to meet, that you don't understand. Um, that if you are trying to write something for other people, you are not going to succeed. It's very, it's a very difficult thing to do, and you will never please everybody. 
So one of the things I always do is I, I only write about what I, what I care about because the internet is big and vast enough for everyone else to fill in the blanks. And uh, getting on to the next step of that, the aspect of it, uh, don't do what other people say because they're wrong. <laughs> if you believe in something and you strongly believe in it, you should go and explore it and find out for yourself because you're going to learn those lessons yourself. When I started to do my website, and I said, it's HTML5, and this was 2008, so, you know, Internet Explorer, that was out of the question, and, uh, and I released it one day after Firefox 3 came out, which supported HTML5 elements, so I, re I released a website that only worked on one web browser that was only available on that day. Um, seems quite crazy, people said I was, I was completely stupid, and that, you know, oh, you've got to think about the people who are using IE, and you've got to think about your market share, and you've got to think about this, and you can't do that. Well, yes, you can do that, because... Actually, IE only makes up what four percent of my statistics, and my target, my audience, or you know who I was writing for, was myself, which is a technical audience who would all be using Firefox anyway. Why would I be writing something for somebody using IE six when my content is about the web and, 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 and the latest technologies and things like that, which has nothing to do with IE six and things like that? So don't listen to what people say about market share and things like that. Find your market share. And you'll see an example later on that I can code for IE6 because it's all about who you're developing for. Uh, here we go. The third main principle is let everybody else do their job. Again, this goes into the concept of, of, of not trying to like reinvent the wheel and, and uh, essentially re-implement everything yourself. Um, this is another massive problem on the internet that everybody else is trying to invent a replacement for everything else. You've got Facebook trying to replace the internet. You've got Google trying to replace the internet. Uh, you've got Microsoft trying to replace the internet. And you've got Apple trying to replace the internet, all with their own particular implementation of it as they see fit. And again, if you want to get the job done, if you are doing something for yourself personally, then no, you don't have to. You don't have to uh, count out to everybody's idea of you need this feature or you need to implement with our website or our API and so forth. Uh, like that, the idea that you're constantly trying to sell something new that's already old. Uh, in practical terms, on my website, this means I have no comments on my website. I don't have a comment thread. Um, because email and blogs already exist. Email's been around since the 1970s. It works. It's still there. Everyone's got it. Why do I need comments? Why do I need a comment field? People can write, get a blog for free on anywhere on the internet and write a response if they want to. Uh, so they, again, why do I need a comment thread on my on my website. There's plenty of other facilities that already exist, that already serve the purposes. And it exists as a stupid filter as well. I mean, you can't, you don't give people a text box to write in immediately below your thing. And uh, if they want to say something of measure, then they will want to go and write on their own blog or send an email. Uh, <laughs> this is true, Ron. The more JavaScript you add to a comment system, the worse it gets. If anyone's used Discuss or anything like this, everyone keeps trying to reinvent the comment system and they keep reinventing it in their own image and it's always just creates the same problem that, that uh, the problem isn't bad commenters, the problem is attaching a damn comment thread to every single piece of content on the internet <laughs> we, you know, don't need to do that it's not the problem, the comment, the, 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 you know, the stupid people did not exist uh, didn't uh, come into existence because of the internet, we just simply gave them a platform with which to speak, we asked them to speak Uh, and again, like this, this problem here of, 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 of everybody with their own implementation of reinventing email or whatever system that, that, that's existed before and, you know, filling your website up with this and slowing it down. So, I don't have any social junk on my website. Uh, people have got copy and paste. Why do you need Delicious or this and that or whatever or Twitter when you can copy and paste the URL? You know, copy and paste, how long has that shortcut been around? I don't even know how long that shortcut has been around. People have bookmarks in their browsers. Why do you need a database on someone else's computer to bookmark something? It seems like a complete abuse of computing power to me. Um, and this has not in any way prevented my content getting around. I publish my stuff. I don't. Uh, my website does not contain any links to my own Twitter. Um, and uh, I don't publish it on other websites. I don't do any. I just write the content, and if people find it interesting, they pass it around. So all of this social junk stuff, it's only good at giving you worthless traffic, is basically what it is. 
it's the same problem as uh, as the comments thing is that uh, uh, that worthless traffic you are just inviting it along. It's not that it didn't exist before. Uh, so with that said, that's my website, and uh, those are the free and free principles uh, which I use to design and, and program and uh, create on philosophy that and code is art. And so therefore, I'm going to go quick, quickly go through some things that I've made uh, on my website. Uh, Right. First one is video for everybody. When uh, HTML5 uh, video <coughs> was just first uh, becoming available uh, in web browsers, there was the uh, big hoo-ha over uh, video codec. So you know you've got uh, the uh, H.264 encoded video and you've got WebM encoded. Basically different formats like the fighting, I don't know, VHS versus Betamax, that sort of thing. And, and the fact that this was a new technology in a web browser that you could play a video without using Adobe Flash. Now, the very first thing that, that, that everybody does as soon as they get a new technology is they start using JavaScript instead of using the actual technology itself. So even web companies like Mozilla were basically, they put uh, tutorials out that said, uh, here is how to put HTML5 video into your website. Use JavaScript to detect the browser and then insert a, a, a HTML5 video tag. Now, that's a ridiculously stupid thing because then you've got uh, you've got JavaScript code that is going to bit rot that might detect the browser incorrectly. When HTML5 video is no more, it's just a glorified image tag. It's just an image. You just use the HTML. Why is JavaScript involved in this? And because I could see this was becoming a problem, this was going to go in a, in a bad direction. That um, because I don't have Adobe Flash installed on my computer, and I haven't for years, and um, I was <coughs> seeing a problem that HTML5 video would mean that I wouldn't need Flash, but all this stupid JavaScript would mean that I would still be tied to <coughs> Flash because they're detecting it wrong, or you know they're not going to be able to update this code. You're going to have snippets of code all left over the internet that are never going to get updated. And then... so I created a video for everybody. Um, okay, HTML was designed to last. JavaScript wasn't. <coughs> JavaScript was a hack. It was a 10 minute job to solve a problem to get Java's to speak to HTML. And the problem is that developers these days don't seem to understand the difference between HTML and JavaScript. Uh, they think that the two are interchangeable, they are not. HTML is a document storage format. It is a declara declarative syntax. It is something that uh, that is forward, backwards, sideways compatible. JavaScript isn't. Uh, JavaScript will bit rot. Your code will not work in browsers in 10 years time. You don't know where your, where, where your code is going to run or not run or Google isn't going to run your JavaScript. It's just, uh, you know, Google bots not going to do that. So I could see this as a problem, so I could take a video for everybody, which solves that problem by just using only HTML to put a HTML5 video into the page. Who would have thought? Uh, I'll give you a quick demonstration. Sorry if I'm confusing you at all. Please stop me if it's not clear. I know there's a lot of interest generally in HTML5, and uh, essentially this is all that it is, is just play the video, but it will uh, automatically select the right video that is compatible with the right browser, and it does this without JavaScript. It just uses the normal, plain HTML embedding method that's been available for donkey's years, but just with um, a video, HTML5 video wrapped around it. So all it is is just a, a simple piece of HTML, and it works very elegantly. And this now forms the basis of most embedding methods out there, of other libraries that are, that are, are, are doing this, that are, are, are advertising themselves as HTML5 video use generally something like this in this, uh, as the core part of their, their code and they use JavaScript to then embellish it with different styles and things like that. And that's what HTML5 video has done, uh, sorry, uh, video for everybody has done. It's actually changed that behavior in the market, whereas before everyone was just using only JavaScript to detect web browsers instead of using a, a fallback method like this. So that's been a massive success. Um, that is probably the number one thing that gets linked to on my website by far. Um, let me move on before I bore you. Uh, 
just a quick note for anybody wanting to use Video for Everybody, it is a pattern, not a product. It is just, uh, it teaches you the basic principle of video fallback. Um, it's kind of quirky, it doesn't work absolutely perfectly everywhere, it lacks features because it is only HTML, it's not JavaScript. But it's the core starting point if you wanted to develop something custom that would work across the board uh, with a little amount of effort. And generally speaking, if anyone asks me about the product, I always point them to, to this other thing called Media Element JS, which is basically takes video for everybody, adds JavaScript on top of it, and makes it all pretty and, 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 and added extra features and all that jazz and everything like that. So that's video for everybody. Uh, the next one is called Remarkable. Um, I have a lot of text on my website, probably a couple of megs of just the raw text. And I was typing it all in raw HTML before, and that was taking a lot of time. So I quickly developed a uh, syntax to take plain notepad type text and turn it into HTML for me, because there's uh, because I type so much text. People have used probably people have probably come across things like BB code and Markdown. Uh, uh, retext and things like that that do this for them. And uh, I looked at all of those, but they were not really my cup of tea. Uh, Markdown, the most popular by far, uh, 1400 lines of code, and Perl had no hope of, of, of untangling that, <laughs> making changes to it. Uh, I looked at PHP Markdown Extra, uh, which is a, mark, uh, a PHP implementation of Markdown. 3000 lines of code, two classes, and 85 functions. It adds a lot to the syntax, I mean, it's, it's good, but. Uh, that felt like uh, strapping uh, an elephant to the back of a fly in the context of my website. Uh, so I created Remarkable, which is 630 lines of code in one single function. And that's it, you call a function and you get, you get a string out of it. It's uh, extremely compact, it does exactly only what it needs to. Again, the problem thing is not solving everybody else's problem. And it's written for my style of, uh, of how I write my website and things like that, but it may be useful for other people. But that's generally showed my typical approach. I look at what's already out there, and I tend to find that it's always over-engineered, and it's always trying to solve everybody's problem rather than trying to solve a specific problem. And then I have to end up writing it myself. Uh, the only downside, of course, is that uh, <laughs> the regex kills kittens every time you write it, so be careful. <laughs> You be careful what you do. That took uh, probably about a week to develop that. It's not. Uh, it, I can't begin to explain it. Don't worry. <laughs> Remarkable is it's it's really good product. It works, but it's not something I would actually recommend people look in and uh, look into unless they've got a lot of time. But it's an example of what I do. Right. So I want to bring you to the main thing that I'm going to discuss today, which is going to be more accessible to people because all the other stuff is is code and quite technical. This is all about discussion about talking, uh, and it is my product called No Nonsense Forum. Uh, let's talk about discussion on the internet. Uh, this is a history of protocols. We've got email in 1971. Uh, the bulletin board system, hands up, anyone who's actually used BBS or was familiar with BBSs back in the day? I didn't join the internet until 1996, the year when all that stuff just died, which is really unfortunate, in the face of AOL, of all people. Uh, 1980, the Usenet. Uh, 1988, Internet Relay Chat, 1994, The Forum, which was obviously invented as an answer to AOL. Uh, 1997, uh, Blogging, 2004, Facebook, and 2006, Twitter, and all the new stuff. The thing is, what's interesting about all of these things uh, is that most of them are still around with us, even you know, in 1971. It's an old technology, and yet we still have it. Um, so if you look at the record there, email, we've got it, we can't get rid of it, however much we wish we could. Uh, the bulletin board systems, they're dead, uh, they've been basically replaced by the World Wide Web. Uh, nobody really uses BBS anymore. Uh, Usenet uh, is still used, but it's mainly just used for, I don't know, porn or something, just distributing files, not rather than the textual content of it. So that's kind of been replaced by BitTorrent, you can say. Uh, the Internet Relay Chat, completely alive and well, doing really well. That's used as the backbone for a lot of online chat systems that are done through, otherwise done through an interface like uh, Ajax or, 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 or Flash or something might be using IRC on the back of it. It's used for a lot of discussion between development teams and things like that. Uh, a great technology, still used now. Uh, the forum, still going strong. We don't like them, but they're still a very popular thing. And uh, they're usually the first thing for uh, online technical support is the forum. You rely on it to answer solve problems. Uh, blogging, still booming, uh, on the way up. And the final two I want to look at is uh, Facebook and Twitter, since they're the most newest entries on this list. 
the difference with those two is that these are brands, they're not protocols. They are not guaranteed to exist. Two years and they could be gone. Anybody remember MySpace, Bebo, uh, all of that junk? There could be a day when we laugh when people say that you've got Facebook profile. far. Um, so their future is not guaranteed. No, none of these things are guaranteed. But the point that I'm getting to is that the forum is not dead, it's just lost its way. We may hate the forum, but that doesn't mean that the technology itself is worthless because we've still got email, we've still got IRC, we've still got all these technologies that are decades old. And so, these are the problems with the forum, and we all recognise this. Uh, signatures, that you've, you've just got so many pictures and signature you can't tell one where one post starts and ends. You've got massive avatars, ranks and popularity contests, massively over-engineered, uh, noise clutter possibility, hate them. They're good for Googling into so you can find a problem and get out, but you would never want to participate on one. And the result is that the discussion has been drowned out by ego, that basically the forum has lost its way. Um, that brings you my product, No Nonsense Forum, which is designed to solve that. Not, well, not solve everybody's problem, but I designed it because I wasn't going to run a forum on my website for written by someone else because it had all of those problems. It has no database. Everybody starts and says, I'm going to write a forum, SQL. And it's not necessary. Um, it's over engineering, it's not portable. No nonsense forum uses no database at all, it just uses RSS feeds. Is anybody, everybody familiar with RSS or heard of it? Um, RSS is a fantastic technology for keeping up to date on when a website, every time a website changes. Most forums all have RSS feeds. The RSS feed contains the feed. Why do you need to store the data a second time over in an SQL database and then churn out the HTML and also churn out the RSS and everything when you can just put the data in the RSS feed? My forum, every time you create a new feed, uh, a new thread, discussion thread, it creates a new RSS feed. Every time you reply, it just adds an item to the RSS feed. When you subscribe to the RSS, you are subscribing to the actual discussion thread itself, not something that's been spat out of the database. Uh, there are absolutely no hurdles to discussion. One of the biggest problems with forums is hurdles to discussion, preventing people from discussing because they have to go through too many hoops to get to it. This is why things like Twitter are so successful, because it is a low barrier to entry, uh, and you can use many different devices and whatnot and be able to just say, broadcast what you want without hurdles. Most forums, you've got to go through an absolutely ridiculous procedure before you can even say anything. And so my forum you can register and post at the exact same time, you don't have to go for a pre-registration, you don't have to confirm your email address, you don't have to type in uh, a, a short novel to confirm who you are, uh, there's no captures when you post. It looks a bit like this. You type your name, you type a message, you type a name, uh, sorry, you type the title of the discussion, for you type your, your, your discussion, you type a name and a password, and when you press submit, it's posted, that's it. And it's a name reservation service. It's not the same as registration. If you, it's a key pair, it's a pair, a special pair of your name and your password so that you can reserve your name and keep your name. But it's completely anonymous. You can have a different name every single time if you want. It's not tied to anything, there's no database. It's just what goes straight into the data and it means that you can keep a name but you don't have to log in. You can just type in the post. And if your web browser saves your name and password, well then every time you visit the forum, Type your message post, type your message post, <coughs> nothing to prevent you talking. Uh, no distraction, just discussion. So I cut all the crap again. There's no avatars, no post ranks, no signatures, no profile, no integration with this, that, everything else. It focuses purely on the discussion aspect. That the, that the most important thing is what people are saying, not how they report themselves. I don't have ranks, for example, of like I've got X-Man post because I believe that people who are important in the forum will be visible because they will be the ones that are doing the replying, they'll be the talking, people will get to know them because they are there. You don't need a rank to say that. Um, you can rely on the human aspect. You don't need a database filled for what is a human, um, simple human behaviour. Uh, no notice of forum, it works everywhere. Unlike my website, um, which is tailored to Technical people just like myself, because I'm writing for myself, No Nonsense Forum is designed to be used. Uh, it works on Internet Explorer 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, Firefox 3 up, Google Chrome, Safari 3 up, 9, even text browsers. Uh, it works on mobile devices and so forth. Uh, it works on 
Opera, if you use the Opera web browser, it will show you what the latest uh, feeds are and the latest reply is if you on, on the uh, speed dial page. There's no other from that does that as far I'm aware of. Uh, that's a good feature. Uh, it's very easy to theme. Um, this is something that's gone reasonably recently um, as more and more people have started to use it and I'm trying to sort of cater to, to beyond just my own scope, which is sort of new territory for me as it were. The templates are HTML only HTML. Uh, there's there's no secondary language you've got to learn. There's no embedded logic in there. There's no hipster you know templating engine uh, to deal with. Um, if you look into it, you'll find it very elegant. This is what the forum used to look like. I'll show you what it does with that sound. But I started out and I did a homage to sort of BBSs in the day because that's why I had the idea of uh, doing a forum instead of uh, just doing everything on Twitter. Uh, and the important thing that No Nonsense Forum is not trying to be the only forum in town. It is not trying to be the be all and the end all of forums. It is not trying to solve everybody's problem. It is trying to solve the problem for primary on my website of having a place that people can discuss my content without it being comment, uh, comment threads on, on the actual articles themselves, because as I've said, I don't believe in, in doing that. And so instead of doing comment threads, I decided to do a forum, and therefore No Nonsense Forum is trying to solve that problem. But it, has, it turns out that it's very good for small team discussion and things like that because you, it, it, I, I write a lot of, uh, I tend to call my software copy paste run. You uh, copy it from a folder, you paste it into a folder and then it starts working. Rather than go through, now you need to set up your SQL server, and now you need to do this, it's just a folder of files. And so no nonsense forum you can set up within seconds and you can be start, start talking within a minute. It's uh, completely hassle free. So it's very good for uh, teams to talk to each other. Um, there's a lot more that I need to improve on it. I'll get to this in a second, actually, because I haven't actually taken the time to demonstrate it to you. I've got sidetracked there. Okay, this is uh, the analysis forum. Uh, this is the actual forum on my website. And uh, you can have subforums, you can have subforums within subforums, but I don't use that. In fact, I don't use most of the Nonsense features, so they're kind of added there for people that are doing other things with it. And uh, if you want to add a discussion, you can just do it here. But I'll add something to uh, here, Learning Digital Talk. You can uh, delete your post or you can append to it. It doesn't allow you to edit things because it's just uh, it's a one-way conversion of text into the HTML. Uh, and you can then append something to it. It saves people abusing it in a, in a way as well, uh, and just keeping it simple. And it involve, and it's got an innovative markup uh, syntax as well, because the thing I hated most uh, about forums sometimes is BB code. That no Nonsense Forum does not have a preview function because it will always output exactly what you expect. Um, but where it, it tries to help where it can. And there's something very special about No Nonsense Forum's markup is that it's copy pastable. If I uh, put quotes on either around a piece of text, it will then turn it into an actual, uh, you know, special sort of block quote. But the interesting thing is that I can copy that and I can paste it and it creates another block quote, meaning that when I want to quote people, there isn't a quote button. I just literally copy their text and paste it, and it will be formatted in the exact same way that it was formatted for them. That includes bold, it includes italic, uh, it includes uh, name references, there's uh, a lot in there, um, and block codes as well. So that's also something to work with, worth looking at. But basically that's known as a form, it's as straightforward as it can be. This is the things that I just need to improve a bit. Um, it's pretty easy to install if you know how to run a PHP server in the first place. Um, but I think there is a worldwide technology market problem that why isn't it so easy enough to install a web server or a web application that you run on your own computer or your own server as it is to buy something on the App Store? Why do you have to be such a technical person to do that? Why can't I? Uh, Click on a button and say no nonsense form, and there you go, I've got no nonsense form running on my own computer. The reason is because cloud computing is all about them having the access and control and the keys being the gatekeeper to all these things. I think that's a problem that needs to be solved uh, pretty seriously if we're going to combat 
uh, you know, a dearth of app stores and, uh, and, uh, and uh, an unopened web. Uh, easy administration at the moment, again, the philosophy of, uh, you know, don't fix it, uh, it ain't broke. Um, if a technology already exists, use it to reach the case. Early on, in order to delete threads, you'd have to FTP in and delete it. I added an actual in-page delete function. Um, but over time, I plan to make it uh, easier to do a lot of the administration without having to FTP in and change configuration files or change a text file. Like sticky threads for the moment, you have to change a text file that lists each of the things that you want to be sticky. And I will get, up, get to the point of uh, adding something so you've got in-page to do it. Uh, so yeah, I want to make it easier for people to administrate without having to be the actual server administrator itself. And the last thing I'm working on is translations. I've got users who are asking for the ability to have uh, trans in multiple translations because they've got users in different uh, languages. And I am working on it at the moment. I've successfully translated to Pig Latin, so to start. Um, you can help. Uh, no, not this forum. Uh, it's just my little thing, but you can uh, study the code, make changes, you can examine it, you can play with it. It's open source, it's completely free. Uh, you can help by filing bugs with it, you can make suggestions on what you think you should do or what, what your particular use case is, because that's probably the hardest thing. I designed it originally regarding my use case. And the interesting and fun thing has been finding out other people's use case, because that's not normal for my, my sort of software. And you can spread the word to other people. Um, with that all said, thank you very much. Is there anything you would like to ask?